Malcolm Delaney's road from Baltimore to Blacksburg to the NBA has been a difficult one, but he's managed not just to overcome it, but to give back along the way. It was tough, you know, I seen everything growing up. You know, I came from the inner city in Baltimore. Everybody know how tough it is to get out. You know, we was right in the middle of it. It's like, when you live in the city, you can't avoid it. I mean, I've seen everything. I mean, I've murders, you know, drugs. And for me, that's what it was. But my parents never sheltered me. They, you know, I had an older brother who, you know, led the way for me and, and told me everything to do. Um, stay out stay out of the way and stay out of trouble. And my, my parents kind of respected that. They knew that, you know, he was a good role model for me. I grew up in the city, so was, I never seen nothing but the city. And then I go to out there, it's like cows on a, on campus, and it was different for me. But it, it was fun, man. It helped me focus. I was around a good group of guys and you know a good staff that you know helped me get better. I uh, broadcast ACC games for many years, and I saw him get some pretty big games uh, going offensively, both home and on the road. And I love the fact that, like he is today in the NBA. He plays with a chip on his shoulder, you know? And I like that about him. There's a toughness about him, a grittiness about him that I like. I mean, realistically, I knew I probably wouldn't get drafted. I knew I should have. I knew I proved myself. And at the end of the day, that I would end up where I was supposed to be. The day after I signed the contract here, you know, my brother was shot five times. Uh, and he's paralyzed from the waist down now. But going through that, it went from, you know, I went to a Final Four overseas. And, like, it was like, all right, I'm guaranteed going to play in the NBA next year. And uh, signed, I was in L.A. I signed with the Hawks and celebrated with my family. Then that happened. So it was like I went from the best day to the worst day of my life in, in a matter of 48 hours. So. It was, it was tough, um, but you know, just dealing with that and then getting through last season, it just basketball helped me out. You know, if I didn't play basketball, who knows what I would have tried to do? You know, if in that, if that situation happened, uh, so it's just um, basketball just helped me out pretty much. And just his voice, you know, made everybody see and his platform, you know, being in the NFL helped ESPN and, you know, all these people, it just gained attention to it. It's growing up, we've had situations where we had to wear coats in, in class. And it's already bad enough, like, trying to survive in Baltimore City. So now you go into a place that's supposed to be comfortable and learning and you're still not comfortable. So you expect the kids to learn in the, in the class with coats and hats on. Like, you can't do that. So. Like I said, I've been in that situation where I had to wear my coat and, and a hat in class. And even in the summertime, it's too hot. Like, we, had, we didn't have AC, so we had to get out of school early because it was too hot. So it's, it's terrible, man. And, and it, the, the crazy part about it is like, people that I went to school with, like whether it was in elementary school or middle school, they hit me up on like Twitter and Instagram, like, yo, like my, my daughter goes there. We see that you donated the coats. Like, and people are just appreciate appreciating everything that I'm doing for them, not knowing, because most people don't, because I've done stuff for a while and I never wanted the credit for it. I just wanted to do it. I didn't want my name on it. I didn't want, you know, I had an AAU team. I didn't want my name on the jerseys. Like, I just wanted to make sure the kids were good. So that's what kind of person I've been. But, you know, people are starting to tell me, like, you need to, you know, start owning up to what you're doing and showing people, you know, that you're actually doing stuff for the community. And so now it's just, I've been doing this stuff, but now it's just, you know, I'm starting to put my name on it. It's just our city needs a lot more attention and it's just not there. So 
when they see somebody like me and I interact with the, with the fans and everybody, I talk to people on Twitter and Instagram, so when they see somebody like me who actually grew up in that and those people went to school with me, like my classmates or whatever, they see that I'm the one that's giving back, it's kind of, it, it's fun for me. A lot of people, like I said, I even have friends, you know, everybody talk about that when they make it, what they're gonna do. Like, when you grow up, it's like, yo, when I make it, I'm gonna do this for this, and my, for my neighborhood, I'm gonna do this nobody does nothing like and not to knock anybody for what they do because if somebody makes it and only wants to take care of their family I can't fault them for that either but Baltimore is, is tough man it's like a place that really needs help so for me is I take pride in trying to help out my city and definitely the kids They know with me is family first. Then they know how hard I work and how much I sacrifice. You know, I've basically been on my own for the last 10 years without my family just to make it here. You know, I went away for school, played in Europe for five years alone. Like I never had anybody live with me. So, I mean, everybody knows the grind I had to go through to get here. And the fact that I actually made it here after going through all of that, um, like it's better now than it would have if I got drafted back then because it just makes me appreciate the journey more. He's been through so much with his family. His teammates look up to him. He's a leader on the floor. Knowing the family history and the background and all that he's gone through with his brother and all of that stuff has turned him into the man that, uh, that he is today. And uh, he's a valued teammate, uh, a good friend, and I, I really enjoy his company. You're looking for somebody to be a positive role model. You know, that's my biggest thing, trying not to get arrested. So I can't go back to Baltimore telling kids to stay out the streets when I was in the streets. Like, and I try to be that guy who set the tone for them in a, in a different way and show them they don't have to be the toughest or, you know, you can be tough but not be stupid about it. Uh, if you want to be tough, channel it to sports or something like that. And, you know, that's the biggest thing for me, just setting positive examples um, and showing people the right way and laying out a blueprint for people, whether it's the overseas route. Like I said, I got my degree. Uh, like, I've never been arrested. You know, my family, I grew up with both my parents. It's just like, you know, I'm trying to set the blueprint for the the not so ideal situation in Baltimore City. I kind of did it a different way, so I take pride in that, and that's the biggest thing for me.